Hey YouTube, so I'm here to record the video review for Thicker Than Water Season 3 Episode 5. This week's episode was titled Family Feud and literally everybody in the family was feuding with the exception of Jewel and Cyrene, which is very shocking, and Brittany as well. So, if we just dig right on into it, it started off where it left off last week and they're feuding back and forth, Ben and Shannara and Marcus and Tish. Um, at one point, Marcus, he starts yelling at them, specifically yelling at Shannara because he doesn't agree with what they're saying. And then he goes a step further to say, let's be honest, no offense to you, dad, but I had a crappy dad. I had a crappy mom. I'm just trying to be the best that I can for my son. And then, of course, Tish, she didn't have her father in her life either so they're both very protective at the one point brooklyn is holding baby micah because tish walks upstairs because she's getting overwhelmed jewel goes to check on her and brooklyn has the baby the baby fell asleep she's so happy and then all of a sudden tish comes downstairs and she takes the baby out of brooklyn's hands makes up some excuse to take the baby and the baby had only been sleeping for two minutes so that was an instance where she kind of proved her point Whatever the case, um, those two couples were extremely close, so Brooklyn made it her business to talk to each couple separately to see where they were coming from and then to see if they would be open to meeting up and making amends with the situation. So I'll table that for now and we'll get to it later. Meanwhile, Jewel and Ben, they go on a date to kind of just like drop all the mess that's going on like in their in their family just drop it for the night have a really cute date night they talk like real like nasty and crazy but we're used to that um from them since the first season Brittany has like this best friend type of relationship with her father she said it and he said you know people often will call her the favorite even though i don't think he has a favorite um, but people will call her the favorite because in her eyes, he can do no wrong and his other kids hold it over his head forever and they keep bringing it up. So he also brought up the fact of, okay, so when am I going to graduate past being that crappy father? I've been trying, but everybody's still stuck in the past. And I can tell that he realizes this is a process for his kids. So, you know, if that's how they feel, like he doesn't really argue it most of the time. He's just like, hey, okay. I'll take that. I wasn't that great of a father when you were younger. Okay. But whatever the case, that was definitely a running thing this episode, except when he was with Brittany. And Brittany is talking to him about wanting to have a baby. She's serious about it. Of course, the father in him wants to say, are you crazy? Like, you were signing up for madness. But... Um, he's like, you know what? Maybe she doesn't need me to be a father right now, as in she doesn't need me to guide her and instruct her and tell her what to do because it seems like she has her mind made up at this point. At this point, maybe she just needs me to be a friend. So as a friend, either, okay, are you just listening to me? Do you want me to just, just support you or do you want me to put in my two cents and then I can still support you? Well, she doesn't really want his two cents. She just wants his support. Similar to Brooklyn, but I'll get to that later. So, um, naturally, he's just like, you know, I really don't agree with this. This is what he's saying in the confessional. I really don't agree with this, but I'm not going to argue her. Okay, I know you would make a great mother. Would you like me to say more? And she's like, no, 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 no. Okay, so that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You're an adult. I can't stop that. Okay, so that is done. Now, if we go back to the whole... Ben and Shannara and Marcus and Tish thing. So they meet up at the house and they've been preparing for this with Brooklyn for the past couple of days. And then all of a sudden we see that um, they go into the backyard and they take the baby with them. Why? The baby could have sat in the house with Brooklyn, but whatever. They go outside. They're talking about it. They're going back and forth. Really, Ben is upset that Marcus would raise his voice at um, Ben's wife because Ben has more respect for Marcus than to do that so he feels disrespected and although he's the younger brother and he looks up to him he still needs that level of respect and um, then of course from Marcus and Tisha's point of view it just seems as if they were being attacked from everybody and really this is how people feel just some people don't push it as much like Brooklyn said hey I never asked them to watch their baby because it seems like they wouldn't even let me watch their baby to begin with. But Marcus's argument is that, hey, you never asked me. If you ask, you can. But why would someone ask you to watch your baby if they can barely hold your baby for an extended period of time? 
So, you know, they, they really need to view this and be a little bit more realistic. Okay, whatever the case, now they've squashed that. They've said they've squashed it. They want to move past it. They don't want to bring it up again. Well, I wish that that whole leaving the past in the past thing applied to everyone because then we get to the part of the episode where where we have Brooklyn and we have Ben Tanker, the father Ben Tanker. So they're at his favorite restaurant, Brooklyn. You know, she starts expressing her feelings, how really she wants her dad to be like her best friend. Then she brings up things that happened in the past. Now, I understand that Brooklyn wanted to be truthful and she wanted to be honest. She had to get this off of her chest as far as him not supporting her in the fashion show or her singing career. What I don't agree with is that she even said herself, when he makes little jokes about like her first fashion show and how he didn't really know what it was, and he was kind of like talking down on it, well, in his mind, he made it up to her by supporting her as much as he could in her second fashion show. And he thought that he moved past that. When he made the comment, the negative comments about her first fashion show, she laughed and joked with him. And she said, well, I'm tired of doing this fake stuff. Let's just be real. There's a lot of family issues and I can't believe you said that to me and that really hurt me. The only thing I don't agree with is that Brooklyn, when that happened, you don't laugh. You realize you're a part of the problem if you do not address it when it happens. You addressing it years later, it means nothing. Even the whole child support thing. He's like, you're bringing up something that could have happened like 25 years ago. And now you're expecting me to really understand you because I feel like you're just making up stuff to be mad at me about now. And she might not be making up things, but that's what it seems like from his end because he he's thinking... You guys have a good relationship, laughy, jokey, jokey. When you're around them, you hug them and things. And all of a sudden, you're digging up all these emotions that you haven't necessarily had hidden, but you've masked them with other emotions um, that would like lead him to be confused. Like He thought that he was doing something right. I feel for Ben. He's getting tired of them bringing up the past, in the past, in the past. He was like, when are we going to get back to the future? Like, I'm tired of going back to the past. This passport that they had to the past, cancel it. And I completely understand because she's cho she's chosen to have a relationship with him. So, you know, maybe it takes for them to go to family therapy or her to go to some type of, like, individual therapy so that they can move past this. It's no different from being in a relationship and you lose your significant other's trust or vice versa. If you're going to decide to stay in it, you have to move past it and you have to look to the future. You can't continue to dwell on the past or the other person's going to start to get frustrated. You're going to be frustrated because you don't understand like why are you still in this situation and why is this person not understanding you, whatever the case, but they don't understand you because you chose to continue to have a relationship with them and they're like, hey, when are we going to move forward? I'm letting you grieve and have your time of whatever I did to you in the past that affected you so much emotionally, but we're going to have to get past this at some point. So Brooklyn, it's kind of like her emotions just like all like erupted like a volcano out of nowhere and everything was all good. And then all of a sudden she got mad. She's crying. You can tell these are like deep rooted issues, but she never dealt with that. And I don't know. She just wants her father to fully support her. She doesn't want him to like be like put in his two cents or anything. And I just really think they really need to work on their communication skills because they don't know how to communicate. So they have a humorous relationship with each other. But maybe it'd be better if, you know, she said, hey, dad, I want to tell you what I want to do. I'm really not asking for your opinion, um, but I just really want your support. I just want to inform you of what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. And if she prefaced it with, you know, I don't want your opinion, then he doesn't have to give his two cents, just like he did with Brittany. But if she says, I'm thinking of doing something and I want to tell you about it, but I want your opinion, she can't get mad when his opinion doesn't line up with what she wants to do. So, you know, they really just really need to focus on how are they going to communicate effectively and these deep-rooted issues she has. I don't know what she's expecting from her father. I don't know if she wants him to grovel and beg and just, like, treat her like a nine-year-old little girl again. I don't know. But sometimes you'll be waiting a lifetime for that. You'll never get that. So sometimes these are things, like, you have to work out within yourself because I'm sure your past relationship with your father or your lack of has not only affected your current relationship with your father, 
but it's probably affected some relationships with males you've had in your life or perhaps your siblings or your stepmother or whoever. I'm sure it's not just affecting that one person that it started with. So um, she leaves out the restaurant. She's cussing. She's yelling. It's just a lot. And you can tell that Ben Tankard is pissed. But we shall continue this on on ne next week's episode. I really hope that things get better within the Tankard Palace. But as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And check me out at mrsblogaholic.com. Bye!